Uh, I have a fairly extensive history doing trailers specifically, um, including like one of the Sin Cities, a few of the Harry Potters, a Spider-Man or two, you know, where uh, it's just, that, uh, I think I lost track around 140 or 160. I kind of cut my teeth on video games working in the, in, uh, for the Dungeons and Dragons series of games. Uh, and right now I'm working on Warlords of Draenor, which is the new uh, uh, World of Warcraft game, as is my wife. We're, uh, we're, we don't write together, but we're both writing for that game, which is kind of neat. Video games, trailers, actually, and some of the big major motion pictures these days, it's, they're very similar in terms of how we approach them. It's like bigger, 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 uh, lots of layers, lots of ideas, uh, trailer specifically, it's, it's the shape of the trailer and how it explodes in different places and how it might have certain climaxes and cadences. It's, that's the main difference, but the music itself, you know, great music is great music. Trailers and video games and these big feature films, the images these days are so magnificent, uh, so hyper real with all the CGI and and the depth of field, it's like you need music that's this big in order to be able to, to satisfy what those images need. I decided to write something that had a little bit of a wry smile to it, that was still in that genre of action adventure, but also had a little bit of a waltz to it, and a little bit of uh, uh, just a little tongue in cheek. Because I think also in the trailer world, some of the trailers that are the hardest to find the right music for are these, you know, like your, your Sherlock Holmes films or your Harry Potter films or ones that have, they're not just straight action adventure, but they've got an element of fantasy or an element of mystery. Uh, the piece that I wrote, I decided to specifically go for kind of an action comedy type of feel, imagining in my head, you know, the son of Harry Potter and Sherlock Holmes and what would that sound like, you know, so that's kind of how I, I, I constructed my piece specifically. There is a little bit of dubstep in the section that I did at one of the parts, and that's going to be one of the alts that we have, because in certain cases it's just it's this powerful medium, and it really does say certain things in certain ways that nothing else quite does that, and it's also multi-sectional in that uh, it has an introduction and then it goes into you know your first action section, then your second action section, and then your big climax at the end followed by a little codet that has the main theme coming back one last time to remind you that we've taken you on a journey, but we're still in that same world. And over the billing card, I can see. It's always fun being in a recording studio with great musicians. That's, you know, we all use electronics, we all use samples, but it's the, it's having the live orchestra there that really makes it just it puts it in another plane, another level. It's why all of us got into the music business to begin with, at least me. There's nothing like it. I think, you know, a football team, by comparison, is child's play of having a symphony orchestra play and being coordinated and everything that they do in complete synchronization. It's just, it's just my mind. You know, I'm surprised it works every time it does, but somehow it does. Good music is going to be good music. Classic music is going to be classic. And the idea is you want, when you sit down to write something, you want to write something that feels classic so that it isn't so of the moment that in a week it's going to be out of date. I listened to like uh, David Raxon's score from the film Forever Amber, which he did in the 40s. And it sounds as contemporary and as hip today as when he wrote it. And I'm thinking, how did David do that? How, did he, how could he see that far into the future? So, you know, something to aspire to. Uh, I could also say the same thing about Bruce Broughton's score from Silverado, which is one of my absolute favorite scores. I've told this to Bruce many times, you know, it's like, I've actually like called him while I'm watching the film on television going, you bastard, how did you do that? You know, just, and it's great to be on an album with Bruce. It'd be the first time for me. Hi, I'm Craig Stewart Garfinkel, and I'm a composer for A-List Music.